When it comes to learning about religion, it's not something that comes overnight because there are so many aspects to our religion that can even take a lifetime to learn about. And when it comes to the religion of Islam, like all other religions, there are questions that people commonly have. Here are 10 most common questions people have about Islam and Muslims. Welcome back to another episode of FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton and for this episode I'll be going through 10 questions Muslims get asked about their faith and I'll be sharing responses to those questions based on general Muslim beliefs from Muslim sources. The question number 10. Who is Allah? Allah is not a different God according to Muslims. Allah is the Arabic word for one God. Allah is not a God of Muslims only, he's a God of all creation. And if you also look into the Arabic speaking Christian world, you'll hear Christians also using the word Allah when they refer to God. Next up at number 9, do Muslims worship Muhammad? According to Muslims, no they do not worship the Prophet Muhammad or any other Prophet for that matter. Muslims believe in Prophets including Adam. Noah, Abraham, King David, King Solomon, Moses, as well as many others. And when it comes to the Prophet Muhammad, he's regarded as the last of the prophets and only God is to be worshipped, not any other being. A very common question is, do Muslims reject Jesus? Well, it depends on what you're referring to by using the term reject. Muslims think highly of Jesus and his mother Mary, and the Quran shares that Jesus was born of a virgin birth without any father, and he performed miracles through the power of God like healing those who are blind, who are sick, bringing the dead back to life, among many others. However, according to the Quran, he was not crucified but was raised up to heaven. And Muslims reject the idea that Jesus is God in human form or the divine son of God like the Christian view. What is Jihad? Now there's been a lot of misuse with this word since so many people base their understanding of the term Jihad from what they hear on the media. Now the word Jihad does not mean holy war, rather it means struggle or to be more specific striving in the cause of God and any struggle done in day-to-day -day life to please God can be considered jihad so self-control from doing evil things is a form of jihad also another form of jihad is to take up arms in defense of Islam or a Muslim country when Islam or that country or a large community is attacked so in self-defense you're standing up for your beliefs now this kind of jihad has to be declared by the religious leadership of a state who is following the Quran and the Sunnah. Next up at number 6, why do Muslims follow Sharia law? Well, Sharia law is a comprehensive Muslim law that's taken from two sources, the Quran and the Sunnah or the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad. Now it covers every aspect of daily living for individuals as well as collective living and the purpose of these Islamic laws are to protect people's basic rights, protect their property, their political and religious freedoms, as well as protecting the rights of minorities. So it's like a sort of framework that all other laws of a particular country can fall inside of and just mesh together together with perfectly. Halfway into number 5, why do Muslims not eat pork or drink alcohol? Muslims are told in the Quran not to eat pork or pork products, meat of animals who died before being slaughtered or the carnivorous animals, nor to drink blood or any sort of intoxicant such as wine or use any form of illicit drug. This is to help safeguard the health and vitality of the human race. What is halal? That's another big question. Halal is similar to the term kosher used in the Jewish communities and it refers to what is permitted. So if Muslims are going to kill an animal for meat, there are rules that they need to follow. Like the animal has to be free range, so not raised in an abusive factory. And animals must also be killed in a certain way that is painless to the animal or at least as painless as possible. And also has to be cleaned in a certain way just so that any disease can be avoided. Now I've actually heard Muslims being asked this. Why don't you celebrate Christmas? Generally speaking, if it's a religious holiday for others like Christmas or Easter, then Muslims don't celebrate it. Now if it's not a religious holiday like Thanksgiving or Independence Day, then Muslims will more likely celebrate it because there's no contradiction with their Islamic faith in the celebration of those types of holidays. In any case, Muslims also have their own religious holiday called Eid and there's other holidays based on which 
which Islamic school of thought that you refer to. There is also a big question mark beside this, the 72 virgins. So yeah, a common question people have about Islam is that when a man goes to paradise or heaven, is he actually met with 72 virgins as a reward? Well, the idea of 72 virgins in Sunni Islam refers to an aspect of paradise, and this is in reference to Surah 55 verses 69 to 74 of the Quran. And although the Quran does not specify a number, it was also mentioned by Daraj ibn Abi Haytim that Abu al Haytham Abdullah ibn Wab narrated from Abu Sayyid al Qudri, who heard the Prophet Muhammad say this The smallest reward of the people of heaven is an abode where there are 80,000 servants and 72 Hor'i, over which stands a dome decorated with pearls, aquamarine, and ruby as wide as the distance from Al Jabiya to Sana. However, regarding the statement that I just mentioned, Hafiz Salahuddin Yusuf, he said, the narration which claims that everyone would have 72 wives has a weak chain of narrators. So what most Muslims agree on is that those who attain paradise will be accompanied by Hur'i, which are described as beautiful females, but the number is uncertain. And some scholars even say that this reward is actually symbolic of something else. And finally, at number one, the question that Muslims get asked the most is directed to women. Do women have to cover their heads? Well, the headscarf is called a hijab and it's worn to express modesty, which is a very important value in the religion of Islam. Although it's more commonly seen worn by women, many men also have a version of the hijab as well. Normally wearing the hijab is a choice and Islam emphasizes that you cannot force anyone to do anything. So if a culture forces women to wear a hijab, they're actually contradicting Islam. That's the general belief. Alright guys, so that brings us to the end of this episode about 10 most common questions that people have about Islam and Muslims. What other questions do you have? Whether you're Muslim or not, sound off down below in the comment section. Yeah, it's totally understandable if you do have questions about your religion. Definitely want to hear about those as well. Alright guys, so if you enjoyed this episode, here's another related one. Just tap the annotation that you see right here. My social media as well as some other good stuff are below in the video description section. And before you head on out, subscribe if you haven't done so already and ring that bell to be notified of our daily episodes here on FTD Facts. I definitely don't want you to miss any of them. Alright guys, see you in the next one.